Shalom Israel, Shalom, it's your brother J.D. Nija. good morning, good morning, good morning. Here's my buddy, the Park Patrol, Park Patrol Sheriff. Um, before I get started, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rikahakwadash. He had to come a little closer so he could spy me out more. They don't have much to do this time of year. They're looking for trouble anywhere they can find it. So he's gonna keep he's gonna keep rolling, I hope. Unless park right in front of me and distract the shit out of me like a lot of these other devils do. Oh yeah, see? <laughs> right, look. Right in front of me. Fucking prick. Keep rolling, prick. <laughs> oh, too much. All right. Well, I guess I found a new, um, I have found a new occupation. It's called bopping on GMS. Because these, these guys, they're just, they're just wrong in so many ways. It's interesting how the Lord will give people a certain amount of knowledge and um, ability. And that knowledge and ability basically just um, gives them the chance to um, fool people and mess mess with people. So... Brock thai how brock thai how shy brock thai how brock thai how shy brock thai how brock thai how shy hamashiak brock thai the rikahakwadash the holy spirit that gives us this power wisdom and knowledge to bop on gms these guys man i love them i love them like brothers and i hate them like brothers because they hate my they hate my my people. They they lump let me tell you what they do here. I don't know if you've ever heard them. If you listen to GMS, you'll hear them once in a while. And I heard them do it again. And I'm here to rebuke their ass again. Bop, 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 bop them on the head. Straighten them out with scripture. I I don't I don't argue out of my ass, I argue out of scripture. So, yeah, they're right. They're sitting right in front of me, these two clowns. But anyhow, um, so, uh, what I'm going to prove is that the house of Saul, the house of Saul deserves respect, you fucking monkeys. Salakia brothers for the, um, for the childishness, but. Even, even your king, our king, our king, he's your king too because you claim him so brilliantly under Judah. Yeah, we love Judah. Judah's the bloodline of our savior, Yehoshai. But if you go back to the book of the seer, Samuel, see, that's the, that's the thing that you Negroes, you ninjas don't understand is that you don't understand the house of the seer. And um, I went into that a little bit on the last video. Um, bop, bop, bopping on GMS, whatever it was. I'm not going to worry too much about how the titles come out and all that. If you're following me, you're following me. If you're not, you're lost in the sauce anyway. So what's the use, goose? So I'm in 2 Samuel. We'll start in 2 Samuel 9. There's quite a few incidences where, you know, I think I'll go to 1 Samuel first, 1 Samuel 1 24. There's an order to this, but it doesn't really matter because it's all going to say tell you the same thing. Saul is not to be messed with. Even David knew that. Dumbasses, man. 
I don't know how stupid, you know, Edom, Edom called you guys lame and stupid. I'm starting to think he, he had something. Cause you guys just don't get it. Um, first Samuel one twenty four. And of course I'm somehow I messed up first Samuel. Oh, because I'm in two. No, I'm in one twenty four. What happened? Anyhow, I'll go back to second Samuel. I screwed up somewhere. So lucky I'm not as smart as I think, I guess. Second Samuel nine thirteen. And it reads This is um David's kingdom. Okay, I'll go from David's name is great. And David gave him a name when he returned from smiting the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. And he put garrisons in Edom. And throughout all Edom put he garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants. That's going to happen again. These Edomites are going to be getting us tea and coffee and giving us foot massages. And the Lord preserved David's David, wheresoever he went, and David reigned over all of Israel, and David executed judgment and justice upon all his people. Remember that line. David executed judgment and justice onto all his people. Not just Judah, you Negroes. All his people. And then we're going to go into what what his Saul's um, son Jonathan meant to David. I could go on and on. There's so many scriptures to cut you monkey brains that it's pathetic. And David reigned over all of Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. And Joab, the son of Zariah, was over the host, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilidad, was a recorder. This stuff's being recorded, you dummies. Everything you say, every idle word, every, every time you bop, try and bop on the house of Saul... And Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, the son of Abathar, were the priests, and Sariah was the scribe. Everything's getting written down, boys. We have a scribe, we have a recorder, and we have a priest. David's kindness. See, you punks don't know what kindness is. You never learned kindness because you, you've always been in that um, we're the best mentality. You're not the best. Yahweh is the best. You're just a bunch of servants. Get that through your thick skulls. David's kindness. Verse 1 of 2 Samuel 9. And David said, Is there any that is left of the house of Saul? Why would he even care? Unless he cared. It's about kindness. You niggers, you, you claim 100% truth, you're 100% bop, 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 man. You guys are, you guys are wicked, man. One more time for you numbskulls, if you're listening, you will hear me. Someday you're going to see me. You're not going to be able to get away. I'm going to be talking in your face. <laughs> There's one of my old buddies. He's a uh, um, man. He looks like me, just tired and old. You know when you when he was a um, karate expert, and um, he did a lot of um, charity work. I forget his name now. One of my buddies trained under him. I haven't seen him in years, but anyway, he's still training. But you know when you when you beat up your body like that, like we have with the surfing, the skating, the the fighting and all that, your body just doesn't respond after 60 like it used to. So here we go. Bop, bop, bop. David's kindness. Verse 1 of 2 Samuel 9. And David said, Is there any yet that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Kindness is, man, you, you dummies, man. Covenant, oh, oh, 
Negro. Oh, Negro. Covenant kindness. Covenant. Oh, you. Covenant faithfulness. You have no faithfulness. I don't see why this shit doesn't go viral. I mean, everyone listens to GMS, but no one's listening to me, and I'm bop, bop, bopping their brains right open. I'm clacking them right down to the white meat. One more time, monkey brains. And David said, is there any yet that is left of the house of Saul? House of Saul! That I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. I just said that. What's it about? It's about the covenant, the faithfulness of the covenant, you kooks. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of Yahweh power unto him? That's why they don't want to touch me with a stick, because I bust them all the way down to the white meat. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son, Jonathan's son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Maker, or Mashur, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. That's in Benjamin country, you kooks. That's in um, Bethlehem Ephrata. Judah Benjamin, Judah Benjamin, Judah Benjamin. Punks. Verse 5 of 9, 2 Samuel. Mephibosheth. Then the king sent and fetched him, and out of the house of Mechur, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, let's see what it says about the son of Jonathan. It just goes back to, tells the story of how, how Mephibosheth came to be. And when Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, <laughs> say that five times fast, and when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did show reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. He knew how to stay in order, you Negroes. Ninja fever, there, there, you got ninja fever, there, there, there. Fucking bop, bopping on you, dummies. And David said unto him, Fear not. Think we're, I'm afraid of you talking down my house? You're gonna pay for that. Every last one of you ninjas is gonna pay for that. You can't just talk against the Lord's anointed. You think you're playing, you think you're playing games? You're, you're, you're getting set up is what you're doing. And David said unto him, fear not for I will show, surely, surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of, all the land of Saul, thy, all the land, all the land, all the land. Slock you, brothers. So sick of these. We got the 100% truth. We, we got the pure doctrine. We're... You got your own little... You're just... You're as bad as the Christians. Coming up with your silliness to make it fit your story. Yep. Fucking Vocab Malone's right. You do... Um, Bible hopscotch or whatever he calls it. One more time. Can you hear me? GMS, can you hear me? And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake and restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually, GMS. We're going to eat at the table of David continually. 
annually GMS. So your house of salt, your little house of salt rats and your little um, that were, were the bad guys? Huh. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? We're humble. We've been humble, dude. We're not arrogant ninjas like you. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Hello? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and all his house. Do you not, do you just read what you want to read and you don't read the rest? Why don't you wake up and read the whole book? Thou, thou there, oh, you, I have righteous anger for you bastards right now. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so shall the servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Is GMS gonna um, fight back? No, because no one hears me. No one, you know what's funny? There's not even anyone going, man, this JD Nija's going in on you niggas. This JD Nija is going in on you niggas. They know I'm going in on them. But what are they gonna do about it? Nothing, because they can't. I'm, I'm bop, bop, white meat, bop, bop, white meat, bop, bop. I'm bopping them in the head to the white meat. But they, uh, hopeful elect, hundred percent truth, blah, 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 blah. pure doctrine, blah, blah, blah. lame. What does it say? As for Mephibosheth, ship As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table. And he was lame in both his feet. Unbelievable how lame that these GMS has drawn people out into the cold, man. It, out into the cold. So then we have um, Second Samuel. Let's see how much time I got. I'm gonna. This is probably gonna be a four-parter because I love bopping on GMS. I'll just, I just, I just enjoy doing it because it's so much fun. It's so easy to do too because these these guys say um, they talk crap. And I catch their crap. I'm not just listening for entertainment. I'm actually listening to, to find out where the truth is. And the Lord points me. <laughs> he points me to where these ninjas are going off. Hopefully this one's not messed up. 2 Samuel 21, 11 through 14. Um, okay. This is where, um, <laughs> uh, this is where you dumbasses don't get it. I'm going to have to read from, uh, 
You, you people don't know the story. You talk about, you got to know the history to know the mystery. Well, fucking get some history so you can get the mystery. Um, This is where, this is where Benjamin atones for the, for the sins. It's in, um, 2 Samuel. There was three years of famine because the Gibeonites weren't of Israel. Um, I'll just read through it real quick. They, you, you, see, they try and keep everything brief. I'm trying to get the truth. You can't be brief. See, that's why they want it brief, because they want to cut you off from the truth. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, which were which are the, um, I think those are the, the Japanese. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to have the children of Israel and Judah. So, the reason they had the famine was because of Saul's bloody stupidness. He wasn't he wasn't perfect. He was a man. That's the point. You don't want a man over you. You want God over you. Don't you get it? Saul's an example. It's all right to be an example. Especially to your own people, you dummies. Get a grip. Where, wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement? For you may bless the inheritance of the Lord. And the Gibeonites said unto him, We shall have no silver no, nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What you shall say that will I do for you? So he's saying, well, We don't want to have anything to do with Saul's house. We want to be atoned for. We know that he did wrong. They're confessing. You can't repent unless you confess. You guys better start repenting and confessing that you have anger towards the house of Saul because you're going to get wiped out clean. And I'm going to laugh. I'm going to la be laughing at you. And they give me, okay, and, and they answered the king, the man that consumed us and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel. That was Saul. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gebeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. So, they're doing a sacrifice here. They're doing a sacrifice to bring back the house of Saul into the covenant. Then the king spared Mephibosheth, the story I just told you, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiea, whom she bare unto Saul, Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzili, the Mahol <laughs> Maholathite. Salakia brothers, I just had um, heavy revelation. My um, <sighs> my my spirit language. When I got it, it had that that name in it. Mahola Tola Menehenesan, um, Tola Vehene Menehenesan, Methohola Zola Menehenesan, 
Psalm, something like that. Yeah, that's that's those names, those words come into my prayer language in this bar. I've been here before. I've been here before, and Barzil, this guy Barzil, Barzillai, the Mahet, Maholathite, Maholathite. You have to look into that. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord, and they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days in the beginning of the barley harvest. Holy cow. Anyhow, this this is for me. Wow. So, <laughs> I could go into the numbers and the um, harvest and... I think I might have been one of those um one of those family members that got put to death for the sacrifice right here. Um, and Rizpah, the daughter of Aiea, took sackcloth and spread it for her upon the rock from the beginning of the harvest until water dropped upon out of the heaven, and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And it was told David what Rizpah, the daughter of Aiea, the concubine of Saul, had done. So this is where it gets into the meat. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the men of Jabesh Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hanged them when the Philistines had slain Saul in Gilboa. And he brought up from thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged and the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, Buried they in the country of Benjamin, in Zelah, in the sepulcher of Kish, his father. And they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, Yahweh power was entreated for the land. Do you hear me, GMS? I'll be back. Give me two more. I'm going to um, finish this part. There's the history. Get the mystery. Benjamin. Benjamin is going to end up slaying a lot of you wicked niggas. You think it's funny. You think it's funny to talk down on the house of Saul? You better read your book. What's it say? And after that, Yahweh power was entreated for the lamb. What's it say about entreated? You dumb motherfuckers. Heeded the prayer. He he, Yahweh power heeded the prayer. He heeded to it. He said, "It's okay." <sighs> what did what did David do? David went and got the bones. David went and got the bones of Jonathan and Saul, and he got the bones of these seven sacrificials. It's complete, the number seven. Who's who's teaching here? Who's teaching? Yeah, GMS keeps just saying the same thing over and over again. Women need to get their ass straight, the chip. We all know that. That's old news, dudes. We need to move forward, man. You're slowing us down. You have me talking about this stuff that should be common knowledge. This is this is sound doctrine. This is this is Hebrew basics 101. This is the book of Samuel, the seer, the prophet. When David when our whole thing put got put together, you dummies. Don't What, you trying to give me a heart attack? Trying to teach here? I have five people and you won't give the guy that has the most knowledge and wisdom and spirit the power to, to help the people? You guys suck. Bop, 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 you dumbasses. I'll be back. I'm going to slock you, brothers. I. If you can't see I'm passionate about this stuff, if you can't see that I'm bopping and breaking their heads open to the white meat, I don't know what to say.
I'll be right back. I'll finish this up. I'll find a couple more. I'll find a couple more scriptures about the importance of the tribe of Benjamin and the house of Saul so we can maybe put this to, to bed once and for all. If GMS would acknowledge me, I'll be back. Fuck you, brother. Shalom.